Hi there. Welcome back to my Alan Bradley PLC desk bench. Today I'm going to do a video on something I've been planning on doing for quite a while, but uh, finally getting around to it uh, because I've got a module in that has a uncalibrated channel on it. Now this is a, picking it up here, 1756IF16. Now on this particular module that I purchased from a gentleman, I did all my standard usual tests that you've seen in the other videos and channel 0 has a calibration error. Now when we get into the screen I'll show you how all that, uh, where you can find that and what it looks like. And then we're going to step through the calibration procedure. Now as you've noticed with my equipment some of it is a little bit older and uh, I don't have the high-end digital calibration meters and all that sort of stuff. But this also shows you that a qualified electrician in your shop with good quality, uh, maybe not top of the line, but good quality equipment can do a good job of calibrating your analog input modules. And also, when you start looking at other modules that Alan Bradley's put out in the analog line, you'll find that there's a calibration screen in most of them. Um, on occasion, you're going to you're going to want to take and check your calibration because you know things don't look right, and it's not that hard, and it's no mystery to it. They actually step it step you through it on the screen. So with this one, we need a zero volt reference and a 10.25 volt positive reference. And what I've got up here on just over my shoulder is a very old BK Precision power supply. Now this power supply is probably pushing the same age that I am. I'm thinking it's better part of 50 years old and I would have been in grade school at that time. But it still works. It's in good shape. And I've also got a Fluke 123 scope meter hooked to it so that I can get accurate readings on the voltage when I'm putting it in. So having the old dials on it uh, may seem a little uh, old and clunky, but uh, hey, it works. So anyhow, we'll get around, swung around to the screen here so that you can see what's going on and uh, step you through that. I've got two modules here. One, the channel zero will not calibrate regardless of how many times I've tried it. So it's a good way to show you you know what happens when it doesn't work. I'm not not afraid of you know damaging that one because it <laughs> it uh, can't be fixed or at least that's what I've been told by a couple of repair houses. On the other one, I haven't put it in to do any calibration on it, and we'll step through it live and show you and the gentleman I purchased it from uh, how the calibration is done and how it worked out. So, uh, give me a couple of minutes here to get swung around, and uh, we'll be right back on the screen anyhow. Okay, so before we swing around to the screen, let's have a look at the physical setup. Here is our standard chassis. We have, and this is the module that we're going to be working on. It's a 1756IF16. I have all of the jumpers on the one side for voltage in. Commons are jumpered as they should be. On the bench itself, let me just swing down here a little bit. Here's my Fluke 123 scope meter. It's an oldie but a goodie, uh, 20 megahertz, set to voltage. And currently, and which I really don't think you can see on the screen, it's set to 10.25 volts. Now that 10.25 volts is coming from our BK Precision Meter. Now also, moving over here, you see these little jumpers. Well, here's my, uh, I've got four Simpson meters. These, again, old school. Um, minus 30 to plus 30 volts. They're all jumpered together. Now this gives a pretty decent load to the BK power supply so that it's 
and the older meter, the older power supplies needed a decent load to be able to uh, be stable. So in this case, we want it as stable as possible. And I've had it sitting here at 10.25 volts for half hour now, and it, it's staying right where I wanted it to. On the other meter that's there, which you can see, is a uh, DC voltmeter and it's a Simpson but it's a digital meter it says 10.222 so all of these things together give us a decent load it holds in pretty good so let's have a look at the screen here next um, I'm just gonna redo the setup so it's uh, a lot straighter and easier to see be right back Okay, we're back. We're all set up to start our, our calibration screen. So as you can see on the module that is currently in the chassis, channel 0 has an error. Now, how do we get rid of that error? Well, on this particular module, like I said before, it uh, I've been told it can't be fixed. But we can use it to do a dummy run for our calibration and see how it's done. Now, as you can see, um, that's the output card. Now, you, oh, this is the same screen I use for testing OF8 and IF16. There's our channel 0, which is the um, errored module, or my input. And here is our channel 1. Now, as you can see, uh, channel 0 says 10.097. Channel 2 says it's at 10.242 and our fluke meter says 10.25 so there is a big difference in that calibration. The other channels that I can see on the screen, which you can't, all say around 10.24 volts of input So they're, and they're all consistent and consistency is always a good thing. So we start out and We've got everything ready. All of our channels are jumping together so we can do them all. Start calibration. We get the warning. Should not be performed on a module currently being used for control. All channels will freeze at their current values and control may be interrupted. So this is best done in the shop. So we want to do we're we won't do channel zero because I know I've tried that one it doesn't work. We go through and we you have to individually click all of the uh, channels that you want to calibrate. Now if you're only using a couple of channels you could just calibrate what you use all the time. But in this case I want to do them all so that everything is done consistently. And there's two options at the bottom here calibrate channels in groups or channel calibrate channels one at a time. We're going to do it in groups because we're doing 15 out of the 16. And we click, which you can't see, just move that over here and you can see. There we go. Uh, calibrate in groups and go to next. So, attach a low reference signal to indicated channels, channels 1 through 15. And our low reference voltage is 0. So, I take and turn this down and it takes just a touch because we do have some decent load. On our Simpson digital we're at 005 and on our Fluke 123 we're at 0 0.034 pardon me, 004 millivolts. Now for me that's pretty close to, to zero. So I'm going to say that's zero if I had a really high expensive meter it or uh, power supply it'd say zero but so we go next 
and it rotates and it's gone through and said that everybody's at zero except for in this case channel zero so it's gone through and said there's our zero reference now we hit next and it says set to high reference and in this case the high reference is 10.25 now again turn that up nine now this like say with an old dial power supply like I've got it takes a little bit of finagling there we go two five oh it's going back up now if I did it at 2.9 and said it was 2.5 everything would be still consistent but it would be it would not be true so ooh. now I will take and edit this and put a note in there Okay, so it's settled into 10.25. I'm going to say that's close enough. Hit next. And it says everything is now okay on the channels that we calibrated. If we look at the screen itself, we're at 10.2425 and some of our channels are reading actually 10.25 10.249 so again everything is consistent which is what we want and we are done we hit next and it says and it's recorded all of the different values and we hit finish they've been saved and if we look at our calibration gain screen there's all of our numbers and there's our successfully calibrated but our channel zero is no good so there we go that's how you calibrate an IF-16 so now I'm going to stop and I'm going to make a second video showing me calibrating the module I got from the gentleman with the error in it and we'll see if we can get rid of that so I know this has been a long one the next one will be a quicker one um, like subscribe ring the bell come back anytime and hopefully this has been helpful to you and taking some of the mystery out of calibrating Alan Bradley analog input modules and this is the same procedure basically for outputs or other modules you just need different values for voltage thank you